Hello everybody. Welcome to the annual general meeting. How many minutes? Oh, two minutes early. So start taking your seat. Yes, it's going to be stream. Yes. So it we will stream starting streaming in two minutes while I get my glasses, otherwise I'm blind. Okay, um, I welcome everybody to the annual general meeting 2022 for OSGO. In name of our president, Angelo Stotsos, <laughs> Um, we, the board members, are going to be handling the annual general meeting. I will introduce the members. Um, Tom? Tom Cradalis. 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 Michael Smith. <laughs> Michelle, I forgot your last name. Ah, yes, Michelle Tobias. <laughs> Marcos Bernascoshi. <laughs> Rayat Shinde. Um, and uh, no, that's not my name. <laughs> Ancelia Virginia Vergara Castillo. No, as Vicky. Okay, so before we start, I want to tell you that these slides that you're looking at are in a form of a video in YouTube that we invite you to watch. Currently, it's the RC1 version of the summary of activities of OSGO. That is because normally we have kind of two months to prepare this, and this time was like done in 20 days. So we're going to finish on the end of September of this year, will come the final version of the video together with the slides. So because of that, in this presentation, I'm going to tell you that you will find these instructions in the slides two, three, and four that will let you, will guide you on how to add your slide. If we, we have spots for many slides that are missing, normally we have them hidden, and that means that that, is, that slide is not valid for the video. It has maybe last year's information. And once you update the slide, you unhide the slide and send your audio or video. So there are, here there are the audio or video instructions together with some links that lead you to an example of how it will be the end result. And there is also the link of where you need to deposit that audio or video that you're making about your slide. And because it's going to be made in a YouTube in a YouTube video, it doesn't necessarily need to be one minute long. You can pass 10, 20 seconds, no problem. You can make your own video. You will see, for example, for QGIS, there is a, they sent a very interesting video of marketing video for QGIS. It's impressive. So I invite you to see all these, um, these recordings, the audio, the video. So these are the instructions 
And of course, I will be hidden again. I unhide them so that you could see that you can still work here. Um, so let's see what's been happening. We have some, some, in this case, I know of a local chapter that didn't have the time to make the final changes on the slides. So we will give a chance once we get to the local chapters to give a verbal report here, a face-to-face -face report. Besides that, eventually they will submit their audio or video. So, uh, I need to turn this on otherwise. Well, if um, I'm going to ask the members of the board, if you see Angelos mentioning something in Telegram or on venueless or anything like that, because my, hmm? yes, but my abilities on these are zero to minus one. So you, you just, uh, hey, Angelos is saying this. I had Angelos here on Telegram, but now my cell phone is kind of black. So we start with what is OSU. Um, you will see in the video that Angelos is talking about being that we're open source, open data, we follow open standards, are pro open education and open science. And of course, we're thanking all OSEO sponsors, which include GeoCAT as a platinum sponsor, OpenGIS platinum sponsor, and Gantupang platinum sponsors. We have three gold sponsors from this last year, Aston Technology, Work Group, and GeoSolutions. Uh, silver sponsors, Map Gears, Electronic Chart Center, and Terrestris. Bronze sponsors, Mammoth Geospatial, Kaplan Open Source, Brofur, Geoinformatic Maximum, How to Map, and Chartwell. And we're starting with uh, OSU Status Overview. And some of us were in charge of a section. So let's see. This is my responsibility, so it's like, we have in total 497 charter, elected charter members, 15 were added last year, and from all people around the world, we have 1,700 members registered on the website, and 37, almost 37,000 members registered on the any mailing list in OSGO. So um, maybe this can be talked by um, the treasurer, Michael, can you talk about the sponsors, please? The sponsors program, just kind of fast. The, the video is, has more information. Well, we have a moderately active sponsor program. Um, it's been um, a little bit more, um, Diverse recently, we've had sponsorships coming in through PayPal, uh, through donate methods, and we have a variety of individual donation links that we can set up per project so people can get um, specific PayPal donation links for your project uh, to put on your website that will donate to OSGO and mark the donations as for your project. Um, we've also been getting donations through GitHub sponsors. And that's been actually uh, putting in a fair amount of money uh, each month, so it's, it's getting pretty good. Um, Grass is now using Open Collective as a uh, method for getting sponsorships. And so overall, it's, it's coming in pretty well and uh, doing very well. And uh, after the results of the um, Foster G in Argentina, OSGO is kind of back up um, as we were after um, compensating the Phosphor G uh, Calgary group for some of their expenses for not uh, putting on the conference. So overall, the financial health of OSGO is actually pretty good. Thank you. 
Uh, OSU has 21 projects. Uh, this last year, one more community project joined. I mean, this is the report from September 21 to August 22. So it's Proch INI, and there are no local chapters. Um, this is a board of directors. We already introduced many of them. Uh, Vice President is my Michelle in the US, uh, Rajat in Asia, and me in uh, Yes, but remember this is RC1. <laughs> We will announce it in a moment. Maybe in this, this was finished on the, the deadline for RC1 report was um, August 15. So we're kind of a little behind. We'll get to PEY GO API. Uh, so report from the board. As always, we meet once a month, but I mean, since last year, we meet basically on Jitsi channel, and we take votes on Lumio. So every motion that we have, it will be, even if it's voted on this meeting, it will show on Lumio. Um, we have the, this OGC collaboration. Uh, it's a new memorandum of understanding. Uh, there are the details, and um, maybe Tom, would you like to talk about it, please? Right, so we had a uh, um, presentation this morning to discuss this, but just to summarize, we have an updated memorandum of understanding after a couple of years of uh, review. In OSGO, we put together a review team um, and we worked with OGC to come up with the uh, new MOU. So now we have an associate membership in, uh, in OSGO and there's no limit to the number of participants from, uh, from OSGO to participate inside OGC standards working groups or uh, domain working groups. It also gives us the ability to apply for funding when there's a request for participation in, um, in OGC pilots or test beds or, um, or other events. As a result, uh, we're establishing um, an OSGO OGC committee who is going to basically plot out the architecture of participation and um, provide more details on what it means to represent OSGO at, uh, at OGC. Um, you must be a charter member to uh, to be part of the um, to be uh, to have access to the OGC uh, membership through uh, OSGO. We're planning for a kickoff meeting um, in four to six weeks, and uh, we have to identify a business representative who's going to be the president, which uh, is Angelos, and we have to we have to provide a technical representative, um, and that will be uh, the first step of the uh, of the newly formed committee in the next few weeks. We had, uh, this year we had a, uh, another, our second code sprint, joint code sprint between, between OSGO, OGC, and the Apache Software Foundation. The third sprint is planned for uh, the first quarter of 2023. So the, uh, again, the relationship is natural, continues to evolve, and uh, I think we're moving in the right direction so that um, uh, open source and open standards play well together. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so, oh, we have our secretary. Uh, this is the first time uh, the secretary is not part of the board, but it's a job that she still makes part of it. <laughs> Good, I can make it quick. Hello, I am the secretary since some years now, and I take care of the contributor license agreement. So if new contributors show up, they they sign a, a license agreement and we had six new um, contributors showing up in the last year and another step that I want to do is to contact the projects and the local chapters and get the contact points for more information. That's all from my side. Thank you Astrid. I'm sure the secretary would 
appreciate any work from any volunteer to help contact projects. It's to contact a lot of people. So please free to contact the secretary if you want to provide some help. Uh, we already heard Michael when he talked the, about the sponsors. He also talked about the health of OSGO economically speaking. So we can move forward. Uh, don't forget, it's, I like to make it like a habit, at least read it once a year just to have things in your head. Read the, the financial guidance document so that we know what we're talking about and what we do in that in financial guidance matters. Okay, Chief Returning Officer, um, last year 15 new members were, charter new, new charter members were elected and the, the CRO Chief Returning Officers were Jorge and Anne, and recently stepped down for, at least for this period, Jorge is now the officer in the chief returning officer. I will be probably, I will be um, participating as chief returning officer, it will be decided tomorrow, uh, to be able to help Jorge, so again, if anyone wants to participate and help us, the, wel the help is very well, be well welcomed. And these board elections from last year, we have uh, Rajat, we have Marco, uh, we have Codrina and me repeated, and I'm forgetting the name, uh, the, uh, Adam, <laughs> okay. Sorry, I have a Teflon memory with names, especially. These are the election statistics that Jorge prepared. Um, there is at least 66 members that have not voted in the last four years. And uh, I don't know if it's um, the big, their way of saying, I'm, I moved my life to another set of waters, so I'm not participating. So the CRO will work on a procedure to retire from being a charter member because there is no written procedure and the only option is I don't vote. So we'll have, we, we will work on that during this, um, this year and next year, so it's not going to be like immediate. Uh, please uh, prepare for the election. We're here, we're normally, the majority of us are charter members, and we want to use the database from the website, and not all of us have their profile on the website, so start spreading the word with the charter members. Hey, if you don't have your, your web page, create your profile. We will get the current email from the website. We have like many points of truth. We make it a false thing about emails. We have database that is floating of the who is charter member or not, the mailing list of the charter members. We have the emails in the website. So we want to have a one point of truth of the mails because maybe we have mail that is 16 years old and it disappeared. And that's why this person haven't received a ballot. So. Please spread the word. If you are a charter member, please register and make sure that the email is there. And if the person wants to retire, just send a mail to CRO at osio.org stating that you want to retire. Nothing more is needed. 
and the CRO will take care of that. So we will talk about conferences, of course. We know this one, I think, and it was hybrid. And the next one is going to take place in Brisbane, Kosovo. And these are the past conferences. The state of the map and QGIS contributors meeting was taking place in these two weeks of Firenze activities. And we have many conferences during the year. So if you or, or are organized a conference, you're able to create a new slide maybe saying how many participants, how many talks, if you had workshops, like informing the activity that happened in that conference. You can help us out by contacting, hey, I saw that your conference happened, so please create the slide. And uh, we will give you access to the file if, it, if you don't have access. And you can create your slide to report how that conference went in terms of numbers. The same happens with the code sprints. And, well, actually, um, we already heard about the OGC, OGCO, ASF code sprint. And now we go to the committees. This is the list of committees that are listed in the website. And the first one's Code of Conduct Committee. Mm, what can I say? We welcome all. We welcome you. Open Geoscience Committee has many things to say. And you can see the video. Uh, the System Administrator Administration Committee, in the slide you can find the numbers. In the audio, you will hear the new systems that are happening. And uh, remember that Luca mentioned about making this work group. That is to reuse this software that was installed for this event. So, in the interest of time and people's energy levels, the board would like to have folks watch the video and we'll have the discussion with Perfect. Here. So, but before that, then um, let me finish at least naming the committees, marketing committee, Geo for All, all Geo for All Libero America, UN committee, incubation committee, which, um, thank you, <laughs> which Jody might uh, want to update here because this line says it's an application and now it's graduated. Um, conference committee and we go to OSU project. So we have people here. Jody, you can update about PYGO API because the slides are, are out of date. And we also have here Ariel who can update about um, Argentio. Geo Inquieto, Geo Inquietes, Geo Libres in Argentina. So, Jordi, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, Pi Geo API uh, joined the US Geo Community Program last November and uh, graduated just a few days ago, earlier this week. Um, thanks to the Pi Geo API team for being awesome and to Michael Smith for mentoring. Use presentations. Yes, I I I show. Do 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 Um, probably esta. Do 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 do. In the in English, perfect. Okay, 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 okay. What? And why? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 
Eh, in, in Spanish sería costó, pero llegó. Eh, in, yo inquieto this local charter de eh, OCO en Argentina for eh, oficial eh, um, Geo Libres. This is a uh, in community de 437. I'm sorry, my English. Uh, this uh, in presentations in including the video all gender, no? Uh, I don't know, no los voy a aburrir. <laughs> and uh, in happy this uh, in Tuesday, Monday, in official uh, local charter uh, in Cujis uh, uh, Argentina. I'm a 200 member, a proxy. Uh, this is uh, a very different activity uh, for Latin America, in including the, uh, the user Cujis uh, systems, no? Thank you. So, if anyone wants to report something else? Yes, come on. So, I'm Nick Beerman. Just to say, I'm now chair of OSGO UK, and we're running Phosphogy UK on the 17th of November this year. So, if you're from the UK or know someone who is, please come along. We want submissions now. Any questions, feel free to come and grab me afterwards. Thank you, and for all that are organizing events that are really soon, please upload your event into the website because the events that I showed reach up to today and if like the event that he just announced would be on the website, there would be a, a slide with it. So please update this uh, set of slides. Um, then take into consideration that I will be back in Mexico on September 5th. So, but I will be giving access, or Angelos will be giving access, any of us can give access to edit the slide. And I will continue building the final version of the video by the last week of September, okay? with everything just done not so not so in a rush. So maybe some Michelle? So I think um, at this point what we wanted to do was not spend a ton of time on the slides because they will be available on YouTube. And Vicky has been working really hard to get that together. So if you have any final updates, get those done soon. But what we, what we would like to do at this point is open the floor up for discussion. I know there's been a lot, it's been a long time since we've been together in person. So we wanna have time to talk with our community and find out you know, what's going well, what's not, you know, questions, concerns. If there's something you need to know from the board, we're here to answer that. So um, we have a mobile mic where you can talk and let's start the discussion. Maybe you have to come down here and talk into these mics. It's cool, you can't actually see the audience, so you won't be intimidated. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vincent from France. Um, my question is, um, one of the major next challenge we will face is climate change. and. Uh, I was wondering how OSGO, outside of what we do as a, as a job or as software, um, but how OSGO as an association uh, will include this challenge inside the way it, uh, it's organized, inside the way it 
behave inside what we do uh, for conferences, for example. And uh, as for now, I haven't seen real uh, strategical or, or real clear position on that topic, and I would like to have your advice on that. So that's a very general question. Complex, I, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to reveal also now, but just to open the subject. Yeah, so. I feel like we haven't addressed that specifically um, as a board um, in particular, and I think that's something that we could probably talk about in our meeting tomorrow a little bit. Um, the board's actually going to be meeting, but um, are there suggestions from the, the community on how we should deal with that or ideas for how you've seen that work in the past? Two, two very small suggestions. Um, I've been telling most people will listen, but I, I came to here by train from the UK. So I think, you know, travel options where possible, you know, train's a good one. And I'll happily tell anyone who wants to listen to about that. And the other thing is reusable mugs. So at the conference, we had a lot of disposable mugs. So I know a few people brought these reusable ones. So at, in a very general sense, maybe those kind of guidelines, something like that, just a rough suggestion. Um, I just want to say that one big problem we have, and I can see the problem here in this room, is that we have very few members that are active outside developing software. I mean, we need hands for several things. We need hands to be able to do politics, to push things. We need hands to uh, handle a big uh, group of members. And I really don't know how to get all those hands because I also see that um, the average age is growing. <laughs> we need new blood and I don't know where to get the new blood. And this relates to the things we are talking. We are not strongly opposing things that we should be strongly opposing because we don't have the hands to do it or that's how I see it. I know. I would like to mention that uh, as a first step, I think that we took that it's in this direction is that we have vice presidents based on area. So, and also is this is the first time we have a vice president in OSU or a member in OSU that is 27, 27 years old. Yes, exactly. So that was something which I also wanted to echo. I mean, I really feel proud to be in this room when we talk about, uh, I'm sorry, Vicky, for interrupting no, no, no. you. That's so uh, when we talk about diversity, inclusion, there is one aspect which we usually miss, that is the age factor. And I'm really proud of saying that this community is constantly pushing forward the new people, the younger generation. I, I know age is just a number, but then at some point of time, we have to consider that aspect as well. So I really feel privileged to be here as a part of a board member. And I would like to try my best. and with all the support of others to make it happen in the future. So, so that's a very good point and thank you for raising that. Mm -hmm. So it's not only trying to have the board represent in such a way the best as possible people from all around the world, but also going to the younger generations. So yes. I agree, we're getting old. I'm one of them. Are there projects in here that do not see that in their project? Because I know for sure in QGIS that we are facing a very similar position and it'd be interesting to know from you if, we obviously cannot know all the communities, but is there a specific community here that have solved this issue maybe, or they, they, they realized they had this and took some steps? To, to get rid of the problem, or at least to start address the problem. Uh, just answering that, Marco, uh, Google Summer of Code and similar initiatives, and also uh, universities. A good example, Martin Landa, who is pretty much the engine behind GRASS, even though I think most people would not know that if you don't Inards of the engine. Right, since I have the microphone, I would like to pitch a question, if I can. Um, I work in a project that 
is kind of entering into slumber, as it were. And I wonder if there is any procedure in place to review or reassess the graduation of uh, projects at OSGEO. Does that exist? No, 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 no. A project is already graduated, but it's going into a, some, a slumber and eventually might not meet the criteria for graduation anymore. Oh. Uh, so projects certainly have retired before. I'm trying to remember the name of, what was the mapping thing before open layers that Cameron Shorter did? Map Builder? Map Builder stopped building, so uh, it got retired. But there certainly is a procedure, but it's up to the board members. Uh, projects are asked to uh, report to the AGM each year. And if you do need to retire a project, just show up to a board meeting and, and uh, yeah. So actually, this topic is uh, marked for discussion for tomorrow face-to-face. -to -face. And I think these last two years, well, with all these that went around the world, we don't know if it stopped because something happened to the developer team. I mean, what is going on? It were on certain years. So now we can, it's like giving a chance, let's not be so drastic. Things in the world were not like for being drastic, let's, but now we're going to review yeah, but that. I think that the problem is not that the project is stopped, but the project is starting to do things that are not just your way, right? Um, this was an hypothetical question. In my, my case, the project is going on, the project is relatively healthy, but the PSC is not active. And this is something that I hope to resolve before the end of the year, and it will get solved. But I, I'm wondering what if things really uh, uh, tumble to the I, point where I, they I don't mean, meet anymore. I can relate to that. But, but I agree, just, I don't want really to open a discussion that I leave for you to reflect tomorrow. Uh, but I think it's a good idea to give some space because COVID is still is having it's, its toll. Yes, yes, yes. The, the thing is, we have that procedure in place. We, what we did is, this project is not answering, it's not responding. We contacted the PSC, we contacted the points of contact. I think they didn't answer ever, right? So we said, okay, if no one is at the other side of the communication, then just out. If you want to be in again, it's easy. So I guess the, the idea is to do the same. You contact the board, so the board try to contact the PSC. If the PSC does not answer, then maybe the most active developers can gather and decide who is the new PSC with the help of the board or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's via the board. We also ha have had projects that were full OSGEO projects that went down a notch to just be community projects because they didn't have the numbers anymore to like run a PSC or uh, meet the s standards of excellence we ask of our, our projects. We've got a similar situation in the incubation committee where project teams have started incubation and then just not taken action. And I don't have a great way to, to uh, you know, invite them back when they've got time. So. Yeah, the, the thing is, if you are acting as an OSU project with all the guidelines, you can be in. If you stop doing that, like PSC not reporting back on AGM, which is once a year, please, then out. That's it. Um, hello, my name is Pekka. I'm part of the UN Open GIS initiative somehow. And uh, last Tuesday we have a meeting and, and there was a discussion about what is the future of the UN Open GIS. And I see that it has been established 2016, I joined it in 18, I think so, and now it's 22, and now they somehow is changing their mindset or changing the uh, way to, to how they do it. I think UN is very committed to the OSGO, but I don't know what it, how we should handle the relationship with them. 
because they have a they will have some kind of strategic advisory board and I was like who is the member <laughs> from OSTR side and I didn't know I so so maybe there should be uh, some kind of discussion in the board uh, on, on, on tomorrow that how you feel how what what the OSTO like to have from UN and how to how this cooperation will go because now it seems to be that I was there Maria was there, but we didn't really have, Vicky was there, but we didn't really have any kind of, they didn't ask us any kind of opinion or view or something, but I was like, okay, I can't say anything for you guys if you ask, because only thing is like, call the board. So, before the board answers, because I'm not part of the board, sorry, uh, Ivan and me had a conversation with uh, the top guy on the open, today about why are you promoting hybrid GIS if we can do and uh, the thing is uh, long story short they lack um, big companies in the geospatial world that can answer quickly when there is some natural disaster and they can deploy quickly whatever I don't agree with that but that's their perspective so one of the things we were discussing with him, and this was today, so there was no time to do anything, is we should really put some funding, maybe from OSGEO, maybe from I don't know where. That should be the opposite way, sorry. Or, <laughs> I don't know where, but to have really uh, people paid there representing OSGEO, or people that can spend time and resources there explaining, no, no, no. What do you need? Yes, but... I agree with you. I'm just, I'm just translating what he told us. And what he told us is... Yeah, and he, he, uh, he also had this idea I don't know if he's here, maybe he can, no. He had this idea that uh, companies, when they hired, because they had the experience with Poundless, which was a bad experience, he has the idea that when a false company gets bigger, then somehow it gets, uh, it starts uh, deviating from false. No. Give me a microphone. And I, explain, <laughs> and I explain, and I explain, don't worry, there are companies like Red Hat that do this and can do this. We just need some company like this or more than one will be better that can do this. So maybe we need to convince them that this so is So this possible. is a, an advocacy challenge. Yes, we need someone that explains. We need to share that he needs that, uh, to take part in OSGO and to take part in open source, he needs to participate. There's not going to be a company to hold his hand. He needs to show up. Yes, but that's the thing. He said, when there is a natural disaster, I cannot put myself, start installing things. I need to yeah, so subcontract early. someone that Those. puts everything on place. And the idea they have, and I don't agree with that idea, but the idea they have is that they cannot do that with FOSS. So maybe part of the problem is that we are not transmitting that we have companies that can do that. Just Hold them. So we've been in that discussion, obviously, with QGIS and with QField, since they are the two softwares that are in their hybrid solution. And I, th I see a big issue um, in communication. So we, as software projects, are doing a horrible job at communicating in a not technical way. So we are not doing anything that speaks to a level above developers at least for QGIS and QField. Not saying about other projects, but I'm pretty sure that that's something that we all need to, to learn more. And that's something that in QGIS we've been analyzing a lot. And actually, we had a, me a vision meeting last week where we identified that we are lacking people that know how to speak languages of QM and, and, uh, and, and marketing people that they can understand that Yes, there is a software which is open source, is free and open source. But there are companies behind it 
that, that work with those tools, that they are there for them, but they should also invest in those companies and in the projects through the companies. So uh, I think, and I know from now putting my hat of my company on, that they are asking a lot of things and, oh yeah, could you try, oh, this would be amazing if you do that in that software and that uh, and that in the software. But we should not be, we always geo putting budget there. They have a, a huge amount of budget. We just need to figure out how we can, and not OpenJS, but OSGEO have a sales department that is able to, and sorry for saying sales department, but um, that needs to be able to, to get this kind of money from them because it's them that they have the huge budget. It's them using the tools that all our communities are producing. And we really need to turn that around in, in a way that, uh, that in the end is a win-win-win for, for them, for us, and for the communities. And I think communication there is a very, very important part of, of the equation that we are missing out pretty big time. Yes. <laughs> um, what's the name of the professor that was leading the meeting? Let's go up. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I have, well, the reason why I have been in part of the UN Open GIS initiative is, well, it's the sales and marketing of the company services. United Nations is so big customer, or could be so big customer that it's interesting, to be honest. That. And now there is a, the, I have been saying last three years that we need funding from the United Nations to make these things happen. OSGO, funding for OSGO and projects and also buying services from the, from the companies. Main problem with the UN Open GIS was that there was this US DOD project. 5 million euros or 10 million euro of dollars, not the euros, I think so, DOD. Uh, and it was like US government buy services from, from Boundless. And Boundless make a project, and finally they stop funding Boundless and it vanished, and the United Nations didn't get anything. So, problem. Now they are trying to find some money, if they try to get one from the general secretary, it's the United Nations member states general meeting who's decided about the budget. Think about the, how difficult it is, how political it is, and how long time it will take. So three years is nothing. <laughs> and so, so it's, it's a question about funding. But I'm looking after that OSGEO and I think board should take a lead about the discussion with this UN Open GIS initiative. Because now it's, 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 it's very limited. I can't say anything on the behalf of the OSGEO. During the UN meeting this... Uh They, the board's empowered you. You can say things for OSGO. We give you permission. You, <laughs> no, no, but like the board appointed a committee. You're yes, on it, it to, to facilitate the interaction. Yeah, yeah anybody well, can join the, the UN Open GIS initiative. So it's open to everybody. So that's it. But who? It's but, not but open I'm, to everybody. I'm asking, it's I'm asking, Jody, I'm asking that board will nominate OSGO representative to strategic advisory board of the UN Open GIS initiative. I'm, I'm not sure about if Maria is there now. I think so or not. She has been a co-chair of that, but that's, that's not enough. There should be a higher level. I and I'm not volunteering to be that person. <laughs> so don't make a decision tomorrow that, okay, Pekka will be there. So no, I, did, I would say no, I don't have a time. That's, uh, I think it's, it's very fair what you're saying. 
just not even because it's Pekka or it's Marco or it's mm. Rajat or whoever, it's just a little name that it's behind it. If you're a board member, you're just putting a, l a certain amount of weight of importance on how you're perceived in that meeting. Mm. So yeah. I I've absolutely agree with you with uh, if, and that is a strategic thing that we should follow yeah. up. But it's not only one person. I mean, we can appoint one representative mm. and they can explain the same thing we explained this morning. It's not enough. We need mm. to have, we need to do a business to business meeting <laughs> in which really the OSGEO service providers get together and say, hey, let's put something together. I'm not even talking about money, just ideas. What can we offer? What they are asking? Can we already have a list of providers that can provide what they are asking? And how much does it cost? Not, not even talk about cost yet. No. Like, we need they do. That was the yes, position. Because, because there's so a lot that's of why the, no, that's why and how much it costs. It's important because otherwise it will be. Oh, we need that. You do it. No, but uh, at least um, what we were discussing, they know it costs money. Maybe some member don't realize that, but. The general idea is they know they can, but the, I think the, um, and I'm sorry, I don't know if someone is uh, fond of Boundless at this point here, but the, the project with Boundless did a lot of harm there because they were expecting uh, what we are saying. You can hire force and then you can change the provider and it's force and uh, you get benefits from the community and you get uh, you can put mm, the, the things we develop will get to upstream to the open source community so people will maintain what you pay, blah, blah, blah. But that's not what they got. They got a fork that, yes, Bundles was maintaining, but it was completely detached from the community. And that's, if that's the first experience of a big project they have with FOSS, they are scared. This doesn't work. This is like, Buying from Esri, but worse. Sorry, but no, I, I completely understand. They don't want to hire FOSS. That's why we need to change their mind and say, no, 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 this was badly done. This was harmful. This is not what FOSS, making business with FOSS really means. Making business with FOSS means I hire today this person, I hire today, uh, tomorrow this other person. And as this is the open source project, they can maintain, I can change. Whatever I improve in the open source goes to the open source project. And that's not what they have seen. So then I think we have uncovered something that really does need to be addressed. And I think what we need is next steps, like proposals for, um, like you said, we need somebody to be the official representative. But what other things do we need to do in order to make this work? Because I think it is important but we need to figure out what are the, like, the tangible steps we can do next to solve it. Maybe we don't have answers right now, but it's something to think about, and I think the, I think the board would probably be happy to continue this discussion. Um, I mean, I think we'll discuss it tomorrow for sure, but also you know, in upcoming meetings too, you know, we can maybe get together and, and brainstorm, brainstorm some more ideas. My, my suggestion is not just meet the board and discuss this, but meet with the service providers, at least the, the regular sponsors. So uh, I agree that having a first experience with a FOSS company that went wrong can scare them a bit, but you know, in reality, yeah, that can happen with anything first. And second, I think we have sufficient examples in the FOSS world that this is mature, it's operational. ESA is using, NASA is using. We have the wonderful example of Geo Network that started from a FAO, right? A project. Yes. Um, yeah, so yes. we do have a lot of very good examples that this functions. So to me, at least, it sounds a bit like you know, drama queen, a bit maybe. So I, I at this, you, you mentioned you mentioned a B two B event. 
why weren't they here? We have a B2B yeah. event. We have all yeah. sponsors, all companies that offer services or added value, or build features or whatever, and they are here. So, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lovely white paper about their success with GeoNode, for example. Yes, but one of the cases was in the, in the meeting on Tuesday. Uh, we pretty much stopped that discussion because they described that the missions in Africa make the requirement specification, what they need. I need this feature, this feature. And then they say, in New York, UN people say, and then they submit the requirements to the OSGO to analyze and say what is the best way to do uh, solve these problems. Who and did, that, that's who a... Did you, they, who did they send it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I, we, we were like, no, no, OSGO is not doing this kind of job if there is not funding. We don't have a spare time or free time to do this kind of requirement analysis and system architecture design and so on. There's have to be funding for this. And then they, oh, really? Because idea quite often in the UN is that, I said, they can ask from, as a private company, what is your opinion about this? And I say, companies don't have a budget. They have only customers who are paying about the services. And they have some kind of idea that every entity has a budget to pay the salaries and office space and so on. And it comes somewhere and you have a budget. And you can come in every day, work eight hours and so on because you have a budget. So it, it's a little bit more clear than that, right? Like it's a game. At that level, they're used to getting services and direction for free, and it's a marketing game. If you help them come up with a policy, yeah. then they'll adopt it, and then all you've got a whole bunch of member states that are willing to be your customers because they've got to meet the policy. Yeah. Yes. Our game is set up some service providers in your local economy and keep mm. your money you know, uh, local in your country. Yeah. That's our game. Yeah. Yeah. So we can tell them our game. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's not only they tell them, it's convince them. They want us to do that work for them, not them doing the work to find out the service providers that they should be using. So, so I, I agree. Jody, yeah. here's yeah. the thing. And th that's why they like Boundless. They, it was a one-stop shop, yeah. but they, they didn't diversify. But here's the thing. They used to just go to, for example, S3, and say, hey, design this, and S3 is so sure they are going to hire them that they don't mind spending the time, the, the money in advance, and we cannot do it. So that's why I say maybe we should prepare some draft or something. What are they requesting? We have these service providers that provide these things that they are requesting. Send some draft, prepare something that says, if you really want this, we can do this, but we need to sit down. There's a procedure for this. It's called like an expression of interest. Like put out an expression of interest. Some of our service providers will bid on it. This is so we need some uh, representative that goes to UN and helps Maria Brovelli also there and try to explain this because they don't understand this. They, they still see the FOSS community very fragmented, very ethereal, very, I cannot really work with them because they are only freelancers, small companies. And then the moment they had a company they trusted enough, it was a disaster. I, yeah, the, I have an open source procurement talk they should watch. That goes back to communication. That's, they yes. don't grasp us yet. It's and someone that spends yes. time communicating and explaining. That's it. You're going to keep talking. <laughs> okay, but I, Thank I you. like that the director's board will take talk, yeah. discussion, yes. Yes. and then on Saturday, if you need more information, I'm happy to help on that. And I think Maria is also, but maybe we need to have a second meeting or second in a month or so. What is the what is OSGO like to have about this cooperation? Okay. Hey, thanks, Pekka.
Any other interesting uh, discussion? Next, dis <laughs> next interesting discussion to start. Just like people are all like doing this. <laughs> So uh, briefly, I'll mention about the initiatives. Uh, this is already there, but the thing which I wanted to discuss is, so Google Summer of Code, uh, OSU has been participating since its uh, second inception stage. So it started in 2006, and we have been participating in 2007, since 2007. Uh, this year, for the first time, I think it happened, or I don't know, in my tenure uh, as a part of Google Summer of Code administrative team, for the first time it happened, that there were more projects but less students participating. So the proposals from the students or contributors were less. Uh, even though uh, GSOC has changed their rules and now the new contributors or a new developers who is making a transition from student period to a job, they can also participate. We had one example of that. But uh, my uh, discussion point here is what can we do to include more university students or new developers. Uh, one is obviously raising awareness, but we have been doing that. The announcements have been done. So, I don't know. I mean, I see it as a very win-win situation for all the uh, entities, but then also why, why we are having less proposals. Any, any suggestions or any inputs on that? I can speak about my experience as Governor Summer of Code. Definitely, yes, Mark. <laughs> and back then, Pirmin, I think, yeah, he was my, my, my mentor back then, if I don't remember wrong. Um, he had this thing posted on what to do, and, um, and I did it, and QField came out of it eventually. But what follow up, I think, is, was the most important part, and that's that I started going to the university giving. Um, like external lectures on open source and entrepreneurship. Um, of course, that was because I had good ties with the university and they were inviting me. But maybe we should invite, or not invite, but like tell students to try to do that so that they, I got access every year for like four or five years to 20 master students and I was telling them about uh, what you could do. And um, if you know my business partner, Matthias, that's how I... <laughs> I found him. So um, I think that's something that when we are dealing with students in uh, Google Summer of Code, maybe we could just make them aware of that that could be a very powerful thing for them to do and them be the, the ones that then push, like, like, uh, like you are doing now, the ones that push the project more and more, but to really make our mentors aware that they should tell them. It's a very simple thing to tell but you need to think about to tell it. How to tell? I mean, that's the next part. So, uh, how should we tell them? How should we tell them? How? Our mentors or how the mentors should tell the student? Yeah. You're here. How did it start? Uh, I also started as a Google Summer of Code student. So, how, how were you told? So I'm, an, and I'm answering your question of how were you told? Why are you here? Look at your path. You were told. So we do participate, but you also kept contact with someone. And it was, okay, push. Do this that, yes, accept the Google Summer of Code administration, yes, be a mentor. But you kept on contact me. I wasn't contacting you. So mm -hmm. there was this sparkle of interest. But this is happening with you. I saw it since we met in Hyderabad. But right now with Ashish, that, for example, he is in also in the Google Summer of Code administration, it was like this student has very much potential. So, Daniel, we cannot lose him. We cannot lose him. And now he's taking in charge of vehicle routing problems. So, 
yes, it's us. We're part of open source and we're also part of a service provider. And by looking at their quality of code when they are coding on Google Summer of Code, we know if how we can, we are the ones to push them. We are the ones to push them. Yeah, my, my point was really about, yes, we are the one to push them, but we should push them um, in a very simple way. So, like, say, tell all our mentors, like, hey, just remember you can push those people. And yes. tell them you could do things after and not just, uh, you know, there is something after Google Summer of Code and can turn in something really powerful. And it's, it's really just about, hey, by the way, Rajat, you could maybe go to your university and do some presentation or, or just yes. something yes. very informal that the mentor Mm -hmm. Just we should maybe just remember the mentors that they can have a great impact on the on the on the students. Yeah, those are those are good suggestions. And the first step is for that is they are presenting their work yeah. on Phosphor G. Mm -hmm. That's the really first step. Correct. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other open questions, points? Um, thank you, guys. Um, name is Peter Lowe. Some of you know me. Um, I have something like a wicked question for the board. Um, it's about how we reach out to the next generation, how we get new people in the projects. And I um, understand that most of you have a business background, which is good. Um, however, OSGO also reaches out into science, into academia. And there's the so-called learned organizations, which has like, yeah, similar structures like OSGO, just for specific topics on, in science. Two of them are pretty large. There's AGU, the American Geophysical Union, and here in Europe, we have the EGU, the European Geoscience Union. Both of these organizations have annual gatherings similar to what we have here. Each EU, the Europeans, they get together in Vienna in April usually, and it's about 7, 17,000 people pre-COVID, and the numbers are coming back. Um, Alessandro, who sits, used to sit over there, he ran away, okay, okay. Um, 10 years back, we were at such a conference and we decided on Snap to have something like a birth of a feather thing which really draw some, drew some attention. And we've been, we've been going, doing this ever since for 10 years. So we have a bit of an experience about how much work it is. And I really thank the board that for a long number of years, you guys have paid the beer and the nibbles for that, which really helps to get starving students in to listen to, the, to that, what we have to say. However, when we go to these meetings, we go there as scientists, so that's our primary mission. We are not, on, as a primary mission, default representatives of OSGEO. It's sort of a side job. We walk the, the extra mile for OSGEO. Now, after all, these 10 years, we know very well we can do one night event. That's about it, what we can do. We are not able to have a booth there. We can't do that. It would take too much effort. That would be one thing which should be considered to have some sort of a team to also talk about these things and organize these things and make sure that people actually get travel money and entrance fees to be at these events. Now, the Vienna case is actually rather easy. The AGU case is more tricky. The AGU fall meetings attract 30,000 people. This is massive. It's usually in California, in San Francisco. This year it's in Chicago, I believe. And um, if you want to do something on the side there, it's really expensive. You have to rent a room, you have to have people there. And this is really, I guess it would be very worthy to do it, to reach out to all these early career scientists because of these 30,000 people, more than 50% are early career scientists. And I guess they should know about OSGO. But here we can again have the problem. It's who's, who, 
who has the resources to do that. Of course, it would be very easy. Um, is anybody from the California chapter here? Oh, okay. So, uh, why don't you guys do it? <laughs> okay, thank you for listening to me. Um, so, I, I wanted to address the point that, um, that people are going to these scientific meetings and the OSGO part is secondary. And I think for all of us, that's the case. Um, even the board members, like, we're not actual employees, and you all know that. Um, and I think, I think that the ideas that you're asking or presenting are, are really important. I think that we should follow up on that. Um, I just wanna say the California chapter has some challenges because our state is larger than a lot of countries. Um, we have a really big challenge in getting together. Um, we haven't been able to have meetings with everyone because of the size of our state. Um, but um, it, yeah. We are not. Um, we, <laughs> yeah, no, I agree, like, but uh, the solution isn't fixing the California chapter so that we can then go to the AGU. So um, I think we'd be better off figuring out how we can support this as, as a group. And maybe it could be as simple as keeping a list of presentations that are happening at the AGU that involve OSGO and putting, blasting that out on social media. Because there's a huge social media presence for AGU, I know, and I'm sure for some of these other ones. So I think that there are ways maybe that we can get in, in with that group without having to, like you said, have a large budget for having a booth and, and making sure that um, we send people and asking attendees to spend more time doing OSGO stuff. So I think that's something important, but um, as an academic, I hear you about you're at a conference for a reason and you don't necessarily want to do the side stuff. So um, any other thoughts about? But we should definitely talk to the marketing committee directly about some of those things. Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, actually, I was sort of joking. I did not seriously expect the, uh, the <laughs> California chapter to take on the job. But it's I, it's but just been incredibly difficult. <laughs> actually, a couple of years back, there was sort of a EGU event, um, an OSGU event at HU. And thank you so much for the, to the California chapter for the pizza you served to us then. Much appreciated. Thank you. Since I'm out here already and don't have to jump down, any more <laughs> questions, inputs? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, I would say something about the about science and the Google Summer of Code, uh, because don't forget that the, they are students, so they are at school, and they are. Uh, between us, they are the, the ones that are the closest to research and science. So they don't own a business, they are students. So maybe the Google Summer Code and the mentors, they can help the students to push their work through a science career and uh, help them to participate to conferences. And about um, showing what USGO is doing uh, at the AGU, I've been at AGU, and there is a Google booth, so maybe uh, through the Google Summer Code and OSGEO, uh, we can ask some presence there to show what the student in OSGEO uh, did for the Google Summer Code. So there, I find some uh, connection between science and Google Summer Code that this can be used to help uh, um, to get the new generation uh, coming in. It will, be, it will be also useful for uh, other students that are coming to AGU to see that uh, Google Summer Code people, they had a chance to get money and get visibility through the use of open source uh, software. So maybe talk each other, like the open science and Google Summer Code a little bit more. Uh, thank you. That's another example of GSOC involvement with OSCO with us. Any more points? Good, thank you. <laughs> um. <All right. laughs> um, so with, unless there's any, any other 
comments or concerns, I think we can wrap this up and just say thanks for hanging out with us past the end of this conference, and we're glad to see you in person. And um, oh, I should also mention, if you, if you ever have concerns throughout the year, we meet monthly or sooner if needed. So all you need to do is email the board email list and you'll get our attention as a board. And we're happy to discuss things. And we're constantly on Telegram talking about stuff that's coming up in the community that we hear about. So reach out and contact us. It's, you don't just have to wait for once a year to talk to the board. We're available throughout the year. So don't hesitate to contact either any of us individually or the board email list, um, we're happy to, to have these discussions throughout the year as well, so. Feel free to attend our board meetings. They're open to everyone, so uh, they're listed on the wiki and you know, attendance is open, so please participate. Uh, the board meeting will be tomorrow at the university, so if you're out there for the code sprint and you wanna stop by and talk to the board, please do, we welcome everybody. All right, so thanks everyone. We're glad to see you and <laughs>